Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here in Bulldog territory. Um, the turnout's fantastic. I love coming here. Um, it's one of the, it's one of our greatest partners, and I just want you guys to know, as someone who was a teacher for 21 years, we have a really good school district here. I mean, really good. I don't know if you guys fully appreciate that. You've got great leadership, great counselors, and they want the best for you. They really do. And so today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about dual enrollment, and I'll tell you a little bit about my experience um, in dual enrollment, and what it did for me when I was in school quite a, quite a number of years ago. And so before I get started, I just want to see how many different types of students I work with. Freshmen, where are you? Current freshmen. All right, got well represented here. Um, current sophomores, where are you? Yeah, you've got all 10 classes still on the table that you can take. Where are my juniors, my rising seniors for next year? Guys, you're going to see you have plenty of time to still get this in and, and, and really do some great things before you either stay with us or head off to a four-year. So I'm going to talk about these options for you today. And then at the end, your counselors have some information to do because um, it, there's not just a McComb process. There's also a Romeo process that you have to go through. And you have to get through both of them successfully. March 14th, I'm going to come back. I'm going to have a parent night. Um, you're welcome to come again. Um, and I'm going to be speaking with your parents about much of the same things. But I'm going to make sure that we talk about some, some things that... Um, you know, that they need to know before you enter into dual enrollment. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you some of the things I'm going to tell them in case you want to uh, prep them. So just before we get started, credits are different in college. And I want to make sure you guys understand that. Uh, how many credits do you need to graduate from Romeo High School? 29. That's the magic number. So that's how many you need to graduate from high school. When you get to college, the whole game changes. And the way to think about it is each year you're in college, it's usually 30 credits. Okay? 30 credits per year, 60 for an associate's degree, which I really, I, I tell kids all the time, 50 years ago, if you graduated high school, you could leave with your high school diploma, you could work at GM, Ford, Chrysler, you could get a job that could support your family for the rest of your life. Those days are over. They've been over. And so now when you graduate with, you know, your high school diploma, it's just the beginning, right? That's why they call it commencement. It's the beginning of your life. Um, you need to be thinking about what else can I get um, that will allow me to have the training I need to be successful and, and get a great paying job. So you need something beyond high school. Maybe for some of you it's just advanced training, but for a number of you it might be a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, maybe even a doctorate degree. One thing I'll point out, the associate's degree that you can get at Macomb is the first 60 of your bachelor's degree. I really need to get our graphic cards to like take the part between the associate's degree and bachelor's degree and like blend it in a color because that's really what you're doing. So I have students in our dual enrollment programs. Um, we have, and, I, and I oversee early college, early college partnerships and dual enrollment. And I can tell you, I have students who are in the dual enrollment piece who are earning associate's degrees before they graduate high school, which means they go off to their four-year school and they only have two years left. All right, we have a program with Walsh. For those of you who are younger, if you decide to do some dual enrollment and then our early college is still open to you if you're a freshman right now, that's a decision you'll get to make next year. But it's actually possible to do some dual enrollment then do early college, rack up 90 credits, you're 19 years old, and then you finish your bachelor's degree at Walsh, which by the way is on our campus too. So I really want to open your eyes up to possibilities and things that you can do um, that you probably didn't know, all right? Do I have anyone here who's planning on going on for an advanced degree, a, a master's degree, or better yet, a doctorate degree? You want to go into, uh, to be a doctor, or you want to be a, a PhD and, and teach college, or you want to do something else like a law degree. Do I have anybody like that in here? Okay, which one of those do you guys, are you looking at? A uh, master's degree. You're going to be in school a while. It's four years for your bachelor's, one to two for your master's, depending on where you go, what you do, okay? Do I have anybody going for longer than that? Do I have anybody here who wants to be a medical doctor, for example? Oh, you're gonna be in school a long time. What's your name? Did you say Laura? Okay. If you, okay, so you're, you got four years for your bachelor's degree, four years for med school, and then probably four years for your, your residency. You're not gonna be a solo MD until you're 30. Wouldn't it be nice if you could shave some of the time off of that? And as it turns out, you absolutely can. And for those of you who are looking at this, this advanced education, I applaud you, but realize you need, you need to do everything you can to shorten that time period. 
You got four years in high school. You might as well make it work for you. All right? So dual enrollment is simply a high school student who's taking college courses for credit. Okay? It's been possible in Michigan for quite some time. Since 1996, school districts have had to pay for it. That's what you're interested in. All right? And you can absolutely do dual enrollment with very little out of pocket. Okay? And we'll talk about that. Dual enrollment is a big deal for me. So um, I, the, the post-secondary act that allowed for dual enrollment was passed in 1996, April of 96. And I still remember in my little town in the Thumb, I grew up in Macomb County until I was nine, then my parents moved out to the Thumb. And I still remember they called us down to the, the office, 13 of us, and they said, this is brand new and we'd like you all to do it. Now the school that I went to, Brown City High School, had only a 10% college going rate. And in the Thumb, that's pretty typical. All right, not a lot of people go on to school. There were 13 of us that did dual enrollment. Every one of us went on to earn a bachelor's degree or better. It changed our lives, okay? For me, I was one of the very first dual enrollment students to be sponsored. And so for those of you who are juniors now and gonna be seniors next year, and you're just finding out about this now and you wanna hit somebody, right? You're like, how come I didn't know about this when I was younger? There is still plenty of time. I took five courses my, my senior year. All right, I racked up 19 credits, and I didn't stay at the community college. I went on for a four, to a four-year school. After one semester there, I was a sophomore. And after two, I was a junior. And actually, at that point, I was 19 years old, and I had enough credits that I could start substitute teaching. So I was 19 years old, and I was subbing in high schools. Okay? I was only one year out myself, and I realized this is what I want to do. So. I discovered very early on to start making these changes. I finished my bachelor's degree in three. I got my master's in one. I was teaching at 22. And I taught for 21 years before I took this job. And it, it changed the whole trajectory of my life. I was, I drove with people, I have seven years left till I retire. It's amazing, okay? <laughs> so that's what it can do for you. Have any of you ever heard of a gap year? Do you know what that is? I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> where you're basically after high school, you take a year and do other stuff before you come back to school. I just read a study. The average cost of a gap year is it costs you one year of your life. Really what it really does is it costs you one year of your highest earning income because that's one year you work less at the end of your life. The average cost of a gap year is $90,000. That's how much it's going to take off your income. Now, conversely, if you do dual enrollment, and you get a year done in high school, wouldn't you argue that it could add 90,000 to your income? If you're one of those kids that really pushes the boundaries and it's more achievable than you think, it could add $180,000 to your lifetime earnings. And that's not jump change, okay? So I went on, I got, my, I got my bachelor's degree in three, I got my master's in one, I gotta tell you the coolest story. So a couple days before my, high school, my college graduation, I was up on the stage, they were having a ceremony and I was getting an award from the president of the college. And so he's shaking my hand and I'm looking out in the crowd. And in the back row, I see all the guys that were in my freshman year dorm. Everybody was in my hall. They're all friends, they're all sitting together. And I look at them and they look at me and the looks on their faces, oh my God, he's graduating? And we've got a whole nother year left? Let me tell you something. There are a few days in this life where you know you are vindicated. That was one of them. It was an amazing feeling. And that can be every one of you. Okay? So let's talk about how this works. Dual enrollment is open to public school students. So you're good to go. All right? State law gives you the right to do it. The funding is determined by the state. It's a little harder to do it here at Romeo than it is in some other schools. Because I believe you guys have 16 classes a year, right? What that means is Romeo will kick in 600 bucks per dual enrollment class next year, okay? You can get a three credit class at home for about $400, okay? Which leaves you money for your books, which is great. You can be sponsored for tuition and fees, and depending on how much you have left, maybe books, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you can be sponsored for up to 10 college courses during your high school career. If you start as a freshman, it goes two, four, four. If you start as a junior, it's up to six per year, but you can't exceed 10, okay? And if you're a senior, you only get the six, but I did it at five, all right? 
and I managed to get done a year early just by maximizing credits. And I went back one summer to my community college too. And by the way, once you get going on this, if mom or dad is in a situation where they want to help you and they see the value in college, once you apply as a dual enrollment student, you can register and pay for spring summer courses too. So if mom or dad wants to do that, and that's, I'm gonna to talk to them in the presentation about this, this is a great way to get your kid ahead. If they want to pay for a spring summer course to get you even further along, they can absolutely do that, okay? Then kids ask me, well, if I go to a four-year school and I already have a year or two done, does that hurt me? Absolutely not. We have checked with all the four years in Michigan. You enter as a freshman with advanced standing, okay? So basically you come in, you're, you're eligible for all those wonderful freshman scholarships. And then as soon as you enroll for classes and you have those scholarships, suddenly, boom, up you go to sophomore status. All right, very simple. It is your right to do dual enrollment in the state of Michigan. The state of Michigan wants you to do it. There are some test scores that you have to have to qualify in certain subjects. PSAT, SAT, any of those can be used. MSTEP can be used. I know the SAT one's off, off the top of my head. You need a 460 in English and a 510 in math. But if you don't have those scores, they only limit you from taking, some of you guys are like, that's not that high. No, it's not. It's really not. I ask my dual enrollment kids all the time, do you need to be a brainiac to do this? No. Constantly. That's the first answer I hear. Second question I ask them, are there, question, are there, are there classes at your high school that were more difficult than some of your college classes? Absolutely. You can all do this. Okay? Now, what I'm going to tell you is there may be some better choices for some of you. If you're a science kid and you're not an English kid and your English score doesn't qualify but your math score does, then that may be something you want to pursue. However, though, you need to exhaust your Romeo, the highest level course available to you. And let me tell you why you do that. I have a little friend over here that was telling me about his AP classes. All right? And what ones have you taken so far? All AP computer science, AP world, and AP Okay. So once you take AP Gov, for example, that's as far as you can go at Romeo. AP US Gov, you guys don't have comparative data. No. no, but you could take it at Macomb. So if, you, if that was his area and he wants to go into that more deeply, he can then take a 2,000 level course. We use 1,000 and 2,000 instead of 100 and 200, okay? So your, your AP classes that you take here unlock more difficult or, or, or deeper stuff at Macomb. If anyone here has taken AP Psych or wants to take AP Psych and you really are pretty sure that that's what you want to go into and that's what you want to major in, great, take AP Psych here, pass the AP test, and then after you've done that, now all the other higher level psychs are available to you. Abnormal psych, crazy people, all right? I mean, that's the kind of fun classes that people want to take, all right? And you said computer science. Now that you've taken computer science, that transfers as our ITCS 1010, which means one of the classes that would be open to you is building your own computer game, which I think sounds pretty cool, all right? So I mentioned the spring and summer courses or courses that go over the 10, okay? I, I will tell parents, almost all the classes are open to your student. So choose wisely and be involved in what they choose, okay? This is the worst part. I have to tell you some things today because I care about you as people, even though it doesn't make me a very good salesperson at the time. If you fail a course, state law says you have to reimburse the district. Okay? So you got to pass. Also, for classes to transfer, you need to have a solid C or better. And there's some of the people who are looking, I've never had a C in my life. That sounds disgusting. This is going to be hard. I was a valedictorian too. A B in a college class is not a bad grade. Okay? It demonstrates the ability to do college level work. Another thing I wanted to point out too, you're starting a college transcript. Now, I have to ask this question too. How many of the older students in here had a freshman year that, boy, you wish you could forget? Because it's just killing your GPA. You're a smart kid, but COVID and everything else, right? Did you ever think about the fact it might be, yeah, you might not be able to get into U of M right now, correct? But did you ever think about the fact that it's easier to get into many of these schools as a transfer student after a year. You come to Macomb, you put up a really nice transcript of high grades, and they're gonna have to take a good, long look at you. That's a great thing about the American system I love, is that you're never really completely out of the game, right? No matter what you did in high school, 
You start building yourself a, a college transcript that looks good, that's what's going to matter to them more. And for some of you, you're going to want to stay with us because it be, it'll become familiar. You're going to want to complete that associate's degree before you go. And by the way, you know, when you go to Michigan State after taking some classes at Macomb, your Michigan State diploma does not come with an asterisk. Took first two years at Macomb. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Walsh actually lets you transfer in 90 credits towards the bachelor's degree from Macomb. Okay? This is where it gets fun. So how many here are taking or have taken an AP class? Keep doing it. Even though you're dual enrolled, keep doing it. Because your AP credit doesn't just waive classes. It gets you college credit. So some of my favorite ones, they only here taken and passed AP US history. It's a senior level class here at Romeo, isn't it? Okay? If you can get a three, the lowest passing score, it is eight college credits at Macomb. Because we have to give you credit for US history up to the Civil War and US history after the Civil War. That class covers it all. Is anyone here has taken or will or, or is taking right now um, AP Lang? A three gets you your English credit, one class. Please study really hard for this one. It's funny, Lance Cruz called me. Uh, they want me to come back and talk to all their AP kids to help them study. If you can get a four or five, you get English 1210 and 1220. And if you don't want to do English for your career, you are done forever. That's what I tell people to. I have, and it opens up other options too. I have a kid from Chippewa. He is just a math genius. And those of you who have had math classes, you're going to understand this one. He took the, AP, he took the BC Calc AP and got a five. Just insane. You know what he took with us last year, or last semester for dual enrollment? Calc 3, he's a junior, took it as a sophomore. He took Calc 3 and then your algebra. Oh. Not my idea of fun, but you do you, kid. Oh, and he four-pointed it. You think that looks impressive on a college application? I think he can pretty much walk into Purdue at this point. Right, in which they, they require like a 33 ACT to even you know, con consider you. So if you have AP passing scores, um, if you have them in the past and you're taking something this year, hold up a little bit. But did you know when you, when you do your AP, um, <clears throat> and counselors, I'm so disappointed, no more bubbling sessions? This is like a rite of passage, and now they're gone? But when you guys do your prep for the AP, where you have to at least like register and all that kind of stuff, there is a spot on there. You get one free send of your grades, okay? Um, we generally don't have you guys send them to a four-year school, because if you, if you want to get into U of M, and you send them your AP scores and they all end up being twos, ugh, that actually could count against you. Use your freebie if you can. Consider sending them to Macomb. And the reason is, we will give you credit for every single one of those passing scores that meets our qualification, and we pretty much give credit for any three. I'll go a little bit further on this. If, let's say you're going to CMU, mom went to CMU, dad went to CMU, they met and got married at CMU, and they told you, you're going to Central Michigan. Or we're not going to recognize you as our child anymore. Anybody like that? Anybody got a school like that where mom and dad have told you, this is where you're going? Maybe on their AP scale, they require a four. It happens. But if you transfer your credit to Macomb, and you get, that you get it posted on your transcript, I saw this as a teacher, we are finding that sometimes when that transcript goes to the next university, they don't catch it. Do you catch my drift on that? And it's getting through. Now, you have that, they're probably gonna catch it. They just are. But we're finding some kids are lucky enough to get it on their transcript, and it's not being reevaluated. So that's, I, that, that's always a possibility. I've been doing that for years, okay? Another reminder, breaks are different between high school and college. Those of you who might have a significant other in college, you've already discovered this, haven't you? Their spring break does not match your spring break. Our spring break is next week. I don't get it off. But students do. And your spring break is at the end of March, okay? Which means that if you're going to take a break during the semester, first of all, it's better if you don't. But if you have to, it's better to take some time during your high school spring break because it's easier to catch up on those. Don't take high school spring break off. And if you're going to do that, I respect that. You're probably better off not doing the role at least for that semester, okay? Also, our classes start, if you, if you go for fall, our classes start August 21st. 
You don't know that maybe before you guys commit. When do you guys start school here at Romeo? Is it September? After Labor Day? No. Oh, you're before that. Okay, so that's even better then. But remember, it may start like a week before you do. So be aware of that. Okay? And then you have to be careful in the second semester because your second semester classes um, are still going on, are, still, are starting at Macomb while your first semester is finishing up here. So you have to be careful on time. Every school has different rules about whether they release students or not for their dual enrollment. I don't even go there. Some schools, you have to leave the campus. And what you're doing is you're replacing electives. That's what you're doing, okay? So if you're replacing electives with dual enrollment, and that's generally how it works. I have another kid from Chippewa, not the same one that did the Calc 3. <laughs> he, um, he gets out at 11.30, he has two classes. They have six hours a day. He gets out at 11.30, which is lunchtime for him. He comes over to the college, because they live like, they're like three, minute, three minutes away. He has classes, and he scheduled this deliberately. You guys probably can't get a little further away. But he scheduled his classes 12 to 1.30, Monday, Wednesday for one class, Tuesday, Thursday for the other. He gets out every day at 1.30. Now, that's not the reason you do this, but I'm just showing you, for those of you who have sports, it is absolutely possible. Um, oh, you know when his weekend starts? 11.30, because he doesn't have class on Friday. And he's released from his high school. That kid played pretty well. <laughs> but I also want to point out to you that in terms of classes, you can take face-to-face -face classes if you can get there. If you drive, if you have reliable transportation, can I just say as someone who's taught college too, all right, um, I think that's best for your first class. It's not perfect. How many of you are good online students? I know you're in here. And you like being online and you're focused enough. You know you. How many of you know that you should not be anywhere near an online class? Hey, that's maturity. To know that and to know you need to be face to face. So you're going to have to talk with mom and dad about this kind of stuff. And at the end, I have another little elegant solution for this you may or may not like, okay? So we offer classes face-to-face. -face. We offer them uh, remotely. And there's two different types. There's asynchronous. How many in here do their best work at 2 in the morning? I do my best work at 4 when I wake up. It's true. All right? After 4 p.m., I'm useless as a human being. That's why I tried not to take classes in college that were that late in the day. Because I just, my body doesn't function. 5 p.m. dinner, okay? 6 p.m. The sports, the sports start. That's the way my life is, okay? So you have to know that too, okay? One, one phrase I want to never hear out of your mouth if you dual enroll with us is if you tell somebody, yeah, I'm a Macomb student, but I'm just dual enrollment. You are so much more than that. When you become a Macomb dual enrollment student, you have the same rights and privileges as any other Macomb student, okay? You have access to counseling and academic advising. And by the way, counselors will be interested in hearing this. We just contracted with a mental health company that for any of our students, you have free access to mental health counseling. You get up to five visits per problem or issue. And it's all provided free. And the way they verify that you are a Macomb student is your Macomb email. So once you, that's another great benefit. Uh, and I think that's important too. We'll talk about all the classes. I have dual enrollment students in all of these. Uh, I have students that are coming down to South Campus to take automotive classes. I have students who are doing all kinds of chemistry right now. Um, you name it. And the first surgical tech class this is so cool. I didn't learn this a couple weeks ago. So we have a surgical tech program that you have to be admitted into if you want to be the person handing the surgeon the scalpels during the surgery. That's a special program. However, could you take all the prerequisites during high school and then apply in February of your senior year and then start the program in August of, uh, after you graduate? Absolutely. I have kids doing that right now. Here's what I learned. There's a surgical tech class that's not even in that program. It trains you how to sanitize all the instruments in the hospital. And schools, are, or hospitals are finding out the kids that do this, and they're coming, and they're snapping up our kids, even after only one class, and saying, hey, how would you like to come to our hospital and make 22 bucks an hour? We need people sterilizing instruments. <coughs> I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good gig. And then keep going to school while you're doing that? Absolutely, okay? So kids always ask me, what can, what can I take? It's easier for me to tell you about what you can't take, okay? 
You can't take anything that is a religion. We don't offer a theology class. And I remind people, history of religions is not a religion class, it's a history class. Okay? You're really not going to be excluded on that. You can't take underwater basket weaving. I wish we offered it just so I could show people, but we don't. And you can't take PE in college. All right? Every one of, every other one of our 800 classes is open to you. Online, face-to-face, -face, some kind of remote. Oh, by the way, I was going to point out, we actually have a difference between online and remote. <laughs> online classes are, you want to do your work at 3 in the morning, you go ahead and do it. We also offer remote classes. Maybe you don't drive, but you want to be able to ask the professor a question in real time. So you take a class that's like 2 to 4 in the afternoon, and you watch it through Zoom or Teams or something like that. And if you have a question, you can ask the question to the professor in no time. The best classes are the high flex. We don't have a lot of these yet. We're still working on this. These are classes where you can show up face to face every single time. You can watch it online live. Or if you can't make it for some reason, the recordings are all archived online for viewing when you want to. I really like those for high school students. I think it's a great, a lot of our communication arts classes uh, are like that. We have over 200 programs. I have dual enrollment kids in every single one of these. Every single one you see up there. You want to go play with FANUC robots, you can do that. Okay? What we want you to do is avoid what we call random acts of dual enrollment, right? Have a plan. Have something that you're working on. And you know what? You might say to yourself, I want to work with robots. That's my goal for my life. And you take a class with robots and you go, this is stupid. Okay? You have learned something if that's the case. And I think there's value in that. Or take our, you know, we have another class that you take before you take, uh, get into the veterinarian program, animal careers. For some of you, you're going to take that class and be like, yes, this confirms it. I want to work with these little puppies the rest of my life. And some of you are like, I don't like cat poop. I don't think I want to do this. And you know what? You learn something because you avoided having to change your major when you're in a four-year school and you're paying for it yourself. All right? This is the big one. This is, if you walk away with nothing else, if, even if you don't dual enroll, I want you to be aware of this. Now, we've, been, we've had a very good winter, correct? We've had very little snow. That's good, because I don't like snow. Okay, I'm in the wrong state. Seven years from now, you're gonna see me in sunny Florida, going to Disney World every day, every single day. All right? But until then, we have to put up with these, this, this Michigan weather, right? Can I actually tell you something good that we have in Michigan? The Michigan Transfer Agreement. And I know what you're saying to yourself, I haven't even applied to your stupid college, and yet you're already talking about transferring? I have to, because many of you will, and I want to make sure your stuff is going to transfer. Now that's not. Transferability has never been as good as it is right now, okay? And certain schools are being really good about accepting AP credits. Grand Valley takes any three, no matter what it is. Ohio State, I just found out, takes any three. Now, as someone who went to U of M for their, their master's degree, even I am impressed with that. Okay? And probably the best transfer site of all that I've seen. Anybody want to take a guess? Yeah, this little school in East Lansing, Michigan Agricultural College, you might have heard of it. Okay? Yeah, it's MSU. MSU takes so many Macomb classes. Here's my point. If you know the four-year you're going to, go to their transfer website, type in Macomb, and then you have an idea of what they're gonna take. I was impressed, because I expect schools to take English 101 or, or basic, like, pre-calculus. At Michigan State, they take our Intro to the Arts Humanities class and the class, not kidding you, this really exists, Rock Music, A Cultural Perspective. It's a popular dual enrollment class because it marks out the humanities requirement and it, it, it transfers to Michigan State. So the Michigan Transfer Agreement, if, if you don't know what you want to do, this is where I, I suggest to kids. It is a block of 30 credits. You have to get all 30 for it to transfer. But if you do, and you have a C or better, those 30 credits will transfer to any Michigan public university. Any. Michigan, Michigan State, Central, Michigan Tech, you name it. There are some private schools who have said, we'll accept it too. U of D Mercy is on this, Madonna is on this, uh, Adrian is on this, Aquinas is on this.
So I recommend you take a look at the Michigan transfer payment. Okay? So we want you to avoid those random acts of dual enrollment. Okay? And I want you to know, no matter what you do, we will be watching. And what I mean by that is, my office monitors performance of all the dual enrollment students. We don't just wait for the professors to throw up a red flag. They don't always do it. I'll be watching your average. I'll be watching where everybody else is in the class. And if you fall below a certain threshold, your counselors are going to get a call. And the counselors are not, I think probably at least one of you has probably received one of these notices. By the way, there's one other cool thing I didn't know until a couple months ago. Your professors can commend you and say, this person is doing a phenomenal job in class. We also make those phone calls. I like to call the principal too, to let them, to let them know, hey, Johnny's doing a great job in, you know, count three or whatever it is, okay? So that we do that. Parents don't have access to power schools. In fact, we have to talk about FERPA, okay? Um, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Ladies and gentlemen, if your mom or dad wants to come in today to Romeo High School and see your academic record, can they do it? Why? Because you're not 18 yet, <laughs> right? In college, it's totally different. Once you enroll in a college class, your mom and dad aren't, if they call my office, I can't even acknowledge that you exist. Now, for some of you, you're like, ha ah, ha, yes. They can't know anything. Resist that urge, okay? And the reason is, there are some very good reasons I want you to file for a form that would give them permission. First example is, I know how you people work. You're gonna get into your class and then you're gonna need your books. You're like, Mom, we go to the bookstore and pick them up for me. How many plan on doing that? Yeah, that's what you're gonna do. If they get to the bookstore and there's a problem with your account, they can't talk to mom and explain, well, the money isn't here because this class wasn't approved. If they are on a FERPA, they can. And my office can give information too. Here's another one. This is kind of morbid, but I have to share it. I had a student who was doing dual enrollment. She was driving her dual enrollment class. She got in a car accident, broke her leg. Okay? Mom called the professor. She's in the hospital. She's going to be there for a week. She's okay, but she's in the hospital for a week. Can she get her work? And the professor, because there was no FERPA, could not acknowledge that she existed. So please, two things I'm going to ask you to do. One is to file a FERPA form and name mom or dad on it. Number two, especially if you go on campus, put the campus police phone number in your phone. Okay? 911 works too, but it's faster to get them. We have very, very safe campuses, statistically. We, we brag about it online. But I think we all know, I was teaching 25 miles away from Oxford, bad things happen everywhere. Maybe it's a medical emergency, someone has a heart attack or whatever, and you're able to save them because you had the number on the phone and the police got there really fast. So please consider doing that, okay? If you, if you come on campus with us. So if you stay with us, this is probably the best part. Let's say you start going to Macomb, you rack up 30, 40 credits, you're doing really, you're like, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna go on for the associate's degree and then transfer to Michigan State and save a boatload of money, which by the way, you should do, because all of you who graduate high school will have access to the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, okay? And as long as mom or dad isn't making like 400,000 a year or more, you're eligible for it, and it gives you another 2750 a year to attend your home after you graduate. So you do some dual enrollment, you do some AP, you take another year of free funding to come to Macomb and finish because the first two years of your college degree could be completely nothing out of, out of pocket. And I think that's really exciting. But I think kids need to know about this. And I appreciate all of you being here, but at lunch today or something, if you've got a, if you've got a friend who's pretty smart and didn't know about this today, will you please share it with them? Because I think I want more kids to know. Right now in Macomb County, 3% of kids do dual enrollment. Do you know what the state average is? almost 20. We're behind here. And we do offer AP courses and things like that too, and that's great. But I think you really turbocharge it when you do them together. You got some AP, you got some dual enrollment, you start really racking up some credits, okay? Here's what that Michigan Transfer Agreement consists of. I'm gonna show you how this AP works too. So you need two English courses. 
These are some of the hardest ones to take because you've got to complete the highest level available to you at Romeo before you can do that. However, you take AP Lang and you get a four or five, done. Humanities, these are the fun class everybody wants to take. Rock music, a cultural perspective, intro to the arts, okay? Math, do you guys have AP pre-calc yet? Not here? That's enough. If not, I think you guys do have AP calc, right? Consider taking it, okay? If you can pass AP calc with a three or better, your math requirement is done. The hardest parts are the science ones, or the easiest, depending on how you look at it. In the science part, one has to have a lab, one doesn't. Well, the one without a lab, I got a great recommendation, and it's a great online class too, astronomy, okay? But you're gonna need a bio, a chem, a physics, something like that. If you have an AP class in one of those areas, and you get a three, four, or five, half that science part. Oh, by the way, if you take AP bio and then AP chem, it says one has to have a lab, it doesn't say both of them, you know, can't, that would be your science requirement. Are you guys starting to understand the possibilities here? This gets really cool. And you start to, I, I, listen, I have taught for 21 years. I understand how, I understand how Gen Z works, okay? You guys have to have it explained to you. But once you have something explained to you and you see the value in it, you go after it. People say, oh, they're lazy. No, they're not. If, if a Gen Z is lazy, it's because you didn't take the time to explain it while it's valuable to them. Because the minute you show them how something works and they see an advantage for it, you guys will go after it like game busters. I know you will. That's your generation. Okay? And I'm right, aren't I? You're all like that, yep, yep, yep. Are you starting to see the value of this? So anyway, and then social sciences. You've got your AP, sorry, you've got your AP world, and you got your AP gov, you hope. You may not need a social studies course to get the Michigan transfer. Okay? So please keep taking those challenging courses here because they're gonna help you get further down the road. One more thing, let's say you're take, taking AP Physics. Don't take Physics at Macomb. Give yourself a chance to pass, right? Give yourself a chance to get that three, four, or five and transfer that over, okay? Moving along here. Oh man, the resources we have for you, I wish people would use them more. Um, as a Macomb student, you have access to the reading and writing studios. I recommend this before you write your first paper at McComb. Have somebody in the reading and writing students look it, up, look it over. You can do it face-to-face. -face, you can do it uh, in, uh, online. They have all kinds of appointments. We have a tutoring center, the Learning Center, where they can help you if you're struggling with classes. Okay? Oh, and by the way, let's say you're at McComb, you're doing well, and you're taking a you know, science class, English is not your thing. Could you go to the Writing Center and help for help? Help for, ask for help with your high school English class? It's a nice little bonus, okay? And then of course, career services. Once you're a Macomb student, you have access to career services for the rest of your life, okay? We have lots of things on campus. You can join a student organization. You, uh, we have athletics, okay? Um, but you can't play athletics until you graduate high school unless you are a 13th year early college. I don't have a Romeo kid doing it. I have about five or six early college kids who are in their 13th year who are now playing sports from Macomb, even though they technically haven't graduated high school yet. All right? If you have, I'm going to say a parent, at least one, that doesn't have at least an associate's or bachelor's degree. They didn't finish college. Did you know they go back to school for free? Tell them about this. Now, I don't know about you guys. How many of you want your mom or dad in the same class as you? while you're doing rolling. <laughs> Here's a couple. How many of you would be okay if mom or dad was on campus taking a different course and was your ride for free every time? That's what I thought. So when the parents come, I will mention this to them. And just warning you, some of them might say, oh, that class looks interesting, honey. Let's take it together. All right, you might want to have your response ready, okay? But they can get free tuition. Um, for doing that. So it's, again, some of, you, some of you guys know that your parent is always wanting to go back to school. Maybe you can be the influence in their life. They won't listen to anyone else, but they might listen to you. All right? So here's our process for applying. 
And then I'm going to take all the questions you guys have, and anybody who has answered a question for me already, or will ask one, gets to grab something off of my premium swag over there. I got some t-shirts, I got some hats, just don't wear them in school, okay? And I got some water bottles. The first thing you're going to do is create a Macomb Admissions account. And I have seen kids do the whole thing on the phone. I don't love it, but it can be done, okay? Um, I have Chromebook. You guys all have Chromebooks here, one-to-one? -one? Then that's the way you would do it. Um, you apply as a dual enrollment student and um, you should use a personal email. If all you have is your Romeo Schools email, I'll take it, okay? But it's better if you use an iCloud, a Gmail, something like that, okay? Um, if you're sponsored, this is the way it works. Your counselor will fill out a dual enrollment sponsorship form. Actually, what it is in Romeo is it's all done at central office. The counselor will make the recommendation, and it's the assistant superintendent that actually does the, the, the forms for you guys. All right? You won't see that part of it. Okay? And remember, before you do, and you can apply to Macomb anytime you want as a dual enrollment student, but you have important Romeo paperwork, and they're going to talk about that in a couple minutes. Okay? Once you apply to Macomb, you'll get a letter or an email saying, thanks for applying to Macomb. Give them two to three days. We're having some trouble right now. Um, there's a lot of fraudulent apps coming in. And I know that people aren't, they're not applying as dual enrollment fraudulently, but they're slowing everything else in. So two to three days, don't panic if it takes that long to get the next email. The next email will say, thank you for applying to Macomb. We have processed your application to complete your admission to Macomb because you're not admitted at that point, you have four additional steps, okay? And no, I don't particularly like this any, anyway. I came in 18 months ago and I looked at this and I said, man, you make this so difficult for kids. But you know what? We can get through it. You're smart kids, okay? And my office is here to help you. If you get stuck in any of this, you, I'll give you the number at the end. You guys can call my office. My secretary will route the call. Sometimes she takes the call and will walk you through it. She's been working in this for quite some time, okay? You have to complete new student orientation. That's easy. You literally just click through some slides that tell you about Macomb. And I've given you most of the information today that you need to know. There isn't even a quiz at the end, okay? But take, take five, 10, 15 minutes to go through it and actually read it. I think you'll be better off as a result. You have two guided self placements, but they're not tests. It's like surveys. They will show you some math problem and say, one to five, what is your confidence in solving this? Zero. All right, no, zero is not an option. So I guess I'd have to put one, okay? But it's good. And just, I want you to be honest. That's all I want. The last part, this is amazing. I don't think you guys know this. Did you know that these things make phone calls? They're not just for Instagram or whatever, or X, or whatever it is you people use it for nowadays. Snapchat, is that the podcast? I know here people are now Googling for, on things on Snapchat. Okay. You actually have to place a phone call to an adult. <gasps> it is not a big deal, okay? Here's what you do. Complete the other three. They're fast, you can do them within 30 minutes. And then you pick up the phone, you call counseling and academic advising. You say, I am a dual enrollment student from Romeo, and I need my SAM session, starting at Macomb. They will know exactly what you're talking about. And they're going to guide you through some questions. They're very basic. Um, do you know what classes you want to take? Do you want to declare a program? By the way, can you declare a program as a dual enrollment student? You can. So if you know what it is you want to go in and do and you want to finish up a call, you absolutely can declare a program, which I think is, is pretty cool. But you don't have to. Dual enrollment is enough. <laughs> All right? And they might ask you some other questions. Are you food secure? Do you need a laptop to complete your assignments? We have these things that are rentable at the college and that you can get resources. I've seen some that, it's, it depends. Every counselor's a little bit different. Some are a little more thorough than others. But they're gonna try to make sure you have everything you need to be successful. And they're gonna remind you that, you know, you guys can, you, you can call anytime if you need any advising help or suggestions on classes. And my office too, same thing. I have parents that come in all the time and we sketch out an entire plan. I have a kid from Utica. Much like you guys, he didn't know about this until senior, you know, senior years next year. Mom is going to pay for a spring summer course. He has four APs he's taking. If he passes the spring summer course and he gets the three or better on all the APs, 
we designed a dual enrollment schedule for next year that will allow him to complete that Michigan transfer agreement. That's fun. I love that part of my job. I love to see kids be successful. Okay? So that's that part. At the end of the phone call, I always tell my kids, ask at the end, am I good to register? Is everything else done? They, the counselors can actually go into our system and make sure the other three are all checked off. Once they hit yes, <laughs> it's four hours to get your mind on password. You get it, you change your password, because it's gonna be like a temporary one. Change it to something that is secure, but that you can also remember, that's kind of important. And at that point, you can register for courses. Now what we're gonna do here, I'm trying something with you guys, because I like Romeo, <laughs> and I wanna give you guys every benefit I can. What we would like to do, and I'm already working with the administration on this, and we have a date set up, is that you will work with your counselors, okay? You guys have to get fully admitted to Macomb, okay? Can you guys do that for me and go through the process? Then you guys can see what classes you want to take, and I'll show you where you get to that. I want to come in, I want to send in my dual enrollment navigator. And so you'll come into the office. We'll have the, the, the nice lady from central office that does all the forms. She can put in all the sponsorship stuff. You'll be at a different table with my navigator, and they will help you register if you haven't been able to do that already. Right. The magic date is April 1. You need to be fully admitted to the college by April 1st. If you do that, you can then get multiple semester registration, so you can then register for fall and winter at the same time. And yes, spring, uh, spring summer classes are available too. Kind of talk to mom and dad. You might not think that's something they're willing to sponsor you for or pay for, but if they see the value in this, they just might do it after the parent night. <laughs> or encourage them to come to the parent night. That, that's cool. You set up multi-factor authorization. You guys, you guys ever log in any emails or any websites where it makes you, you have to put in a code that you get on your phone? Yeah, we do that too, because people are trying to hack. Hackers are gonna hack, right? You are responsible for registering for classes and deregistering, however, you must maintain a full-time schedule between Romeo and Macomb. What that means is you guys have to have the same number of courses, essentially, okay? So if you drop a Macomb class, you have to pick up a Romeo class, or you need to find a different Macomb class. And I'll tell the parents more about that um, in, a, in a week or so. After you're signed up, you do need to check your email regularly. That's how professors are gonna communicate with you the best. Bookstore. Once you are fully admitted and you're registered, you sign up for your classes, and you're ready to go to the bookstore in, say, July, and I recommend this, go early. You call the bookstore. I am a dual enrolled student from Romeo Schools, and I need my books for these classes. Let them pull them. And at the same time, they can look at your account and see how much is left, okay? The nice thing about, I will tell you, as, as a former, as a college instructor, um, I would advise you to go early. Get your books, start reading. Don't be surprised if on that first day of class, you know, it's an hour and a half long class. The professor might tend to spend 30 minutes going over the rules of the class and stuff like that, and then just start teaching. So if you can be ahead a week or two in your reading, that's always a plus, okay? Go to office hours, okay? Get to know your professors. If you make a small effort, I can tell you, you know, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world, okay? And maybe you're that kid at the end, <laughs> You came in for help several times. Your grade is a, your grade is a B plus. They give you the A minus. And you know how I, why I know that happens? Because I've done it for kids who showed an effort. Okay, and I think you see more of that in college than you do in high school. All right. If you have any questions, I want you to take a snapshot of this. You can call my office anytime. We will guide you through it. I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions to anything you have. And I'll try to answer them as, you know, as honestly and completely as I can. And I'm just very honored that you guys are considering it. Um, we think it's a great opportunity for kids. It really helped me. That's why I really enjoy making this my life's mission because I know what dual enrollment did for me and I want to see as many kids as possible have that same experience. So what questions do you have for me? I know I gave you a lot. I was wondering what is the like lowest like um like number like and I'll show you where you can get to it on our website, too. Um, okay, so here's the challenging thing. Math and English are two of the hardest courses to take. 
even your early college students from, from Romeo, those are usually the classes they take here. Because it is so hard to exhaust the highest level course available to you until senior year. Uh, reading, if, if, if AP Lang is available uh, in English, then that's going to make it very difficult to take it an English one. Okay? You might have to rely on your AP score to make that happen for you. Okay? Math, pre-calculus is enough to waive that. I do know that. Great question. Yes, sir. So if you fill a dual enrollment course, like how much can you pay? The entire tuition and fees of the course. Okay? And the state does that so you have some skin in the game. I mean, I don't like it, but I understand it. Because they want you to take it seriously. I can tell you this, if you do the basic work and you show up, it's like any other course. It's, 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 it's difficult to fail. You'll, the professor will find, if you're lackadaisical about it, yeah, I can, you know. So I, I want you to know this. It's something you have to consider, okay? Um, this is not something you blow off and you don't take a whole week off in the middle of the semester just because, okay? Brave man. And remember, you're starting that college transcript too. It, it, it is to your advantage to have the cleanest, highest grade college transcript if you can for transfer purposes. I had some questions over, there's lots of questions here. Is it like to pay less if you're taking less like courses through dual enrollment? Okay, so here's how it works. The, the state tells Romeo, kick in $600 per class. So one of the most popular classes we have, and I think it's gonna work really well here in Romeo, is we offer a two-credit medical terminology class. How many of you guys are in, is it HHP pathway? Is that what it's called here? How many are in that? Oh, great. So you do realize a two-credit course is gonna be a whole lot cheaper, and that one's offered online. And our pass rates online are really good. Can we it, real? Yes, you can. Sorry, we're just, it's 10-10. Um, oh, shoot, yeah, that's So nice. do you mind if we, like, just send a couple reminders? And sure, then no problem. Absolutely, and I'll be at parent night too, so don't forget that either. But thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and, and, and if we have time when we're done, we will still take some questions, guys. And your counselors also know the answers to a lot of these questions. So we wanted to give a couple reminders about the Romeo process, because none of this Macomb stuff can happen unless you follow the Romeo process too. Okay? It isn't just what Macomb says, it's what Romeo says. So keep that in mind. Um, like he said, if you fail a course, you and your family will receive a bill to pay for the entire class. Um, a common amount would be around $400, okay? Some classes, depending how many billable hours they have, can be up to, like he said, $600. So that's something that you and your family have to keep in mind um, if you choose to sign up for a class and also as you're progressing through the class, um, like he said, you need to do your very best. It's important, you're, you don't wanna pay for it, and you're starting that college transcript, so that's important. Um, also, it's a very independent process. So we're kind of having this meeting, and we're gonna do some things to get you started with the process, but once the class starts, and you're going through the class, you are responsible for making sure you attend and do everything you need to do. It's not something that your counselor is going to be frequently checking with you on. If you have an issue, a concern, a problem, you are responsible for communicating with the professor for that class. You are responsible for making sure you do what you need to do. Um, and it's, it's a very independent process. So we're getting you started, but you have some responsibility there. Um, and then there's some other stuff that Rick is going to go over to Yeah, so this is the next meeting. So this is one of the most important pieces we want you to take from this, okay? Take out your phone, take out your calendar, and put March 14th. That is a parent-student meeting. The time is 5 p.m. to 6.30 here in the auditorium, okay? So I'm having you do that now so you don't forget. March 14th, 5 p.m. The counselors are also going to send a follow-up email after today with a lot of information about this next meeting. You need to bring your social security number, okay? A charged Chromebook and a personal email. 
We're asking you to bring those three things because we are actually going to help you get started on the Macomb application. Um, you'll do the Macomb application and the new student orientation so that when you go home, you can finish the process. If you want to apply early, um, yep. you can go ahead and do that. You don't have to wait till that meeting, but just know that that's what we'll, we will be doing on the 14th. Um, the email, some of you asked questions about courses. In the email we sent to you, there will be a link to the course catalog at Macomb and a link to the transfer agreement so that you can start exploring those classes now to get ahead of it. All right, Ms. Fabian? So uh, I know there are about 50 ninth graders in here, so uh, please you know, stay here and we're all gonna go back together. But I wanted to make a point on the courses um, that many people have said, you know, what classes can I take? And I always say, if you want to do the role, I'm sure we can find a class, but again, um, you know, kind of as the presentation pointed out, you want to do the role with a purpose. Okay? You, want it to go, you want it to fit what your goals are in the future. I'm not picking your class for you. The other counselors are not picking your class for you. You need to pick the class that makes sense for you as it fits into um, what Romeo's guidelines are and what McComb's guidelines are. That's a very important part of the process. So I am not going to pick your course, right? And these ladies are not going to pick your course. Um, so I just wanted to kind of make that point. So I think that covers a lot of the important Romeo points for now. Um, we are recording this presentation and Mr. Oswald will be sending that to you or to everybody. So you can watch this presentation again with your parents if you're trying to decide if you and your family would like to come to the March 14th meeting. Um, maybe go over this again with your families. But we do still, thankfully, have some time for the, the questions. Yeah, I'm sorry, can I make one more thing? Yeah. Yeah. One more thing, one thing. Um, I always have one more thing. So just so you know, for the ninth graders in here as well, and maybe some of the 10th graders, 11th graders, you also want to consider your schedule for next year. Um, you know, uh, AP class and enrollment can absolutely go together, uh, much like the presentation said. But next year for ninth graders, it's your first opportunity to do enroll. I'm sorry, to take AP classes. So you want to look at how many AP classes, how many honors classes am I taking? Um, you know, you want to make sure you have a nice balance. What do I do outside of school? I can't drive yet, so my um, dual enrollment class has to be online. Am I a good online test? You know, so I want you to weigh everything out. If you want to do enroll, we'll definitely support you through this. But I also, it's okay to say I'm not, next year isn't a good year for me as well. You want to make sure that you're in a good position to do that. And if it's 11th grade or 12th grade or not at all, that's okay. All right, so, but I want you to really take a good look at what your schedule is going to be and what your life is going to be like next year. If they want to browse the uh, courses that are available to them, let me see if I can drag this on over and then show you. I told you we're Disney people, I warned you that. The magic thing that you want is search for sections. Right here. And guess what? Fall, winter, and spring uh, for this year are already on there. Spike will Kids, give me, raise your hand if you can hear him without the microphone, because I can walk around with the microphone and take the I'm going to speak up just so they can hear, too. We already have our class. They just got posted last week. You can see all the classes that are offered for spring, summer this year, which is on the sign up, you know, time, timeline. We call it fall, which is what starts in August, and winter 2025. Well, that sounds weird to say, doesn't it? Uh, starting in January. So you can see what classes are available and the sequence of classes. Um, I have a young lady who's exhausted all of her biology, so she's looking at, she took AP Bio, she got a five, and so she's taking microbiology and she's taking anatomy and physiology, but doing them in different semesters. It is very important that you not overstretch yourself. Yes, AP and dual enrollment work great together, but remember, a college, a college full-time schedule is four o'clock and usually four classes, six, you know, 12 credits at Macomb. So if you're taking a couple AP here and a couple dual enrollment, then I would say that's good. That's, you know, you're doing what you need to do. Um, but ultimately, you and your parents know what's best for you and what you're capable of doing, but don't overstretch yourself, especially those of you who are younger and have a ton of time to do this. So that's, you know, I, I wanna make sure people don't do that too much. But yeah, you can go on here, we can look at fall real quick. And then someone yell out a subject here, I don't know. Psychology. Psychology. Now remember, 
if you have that AP psych already done, that because you've got to complete the highest level of course uh, available to you here. But you guys can go on here. This is a great thing. It, it, this works really well on your phone, too. If you just Google Macomb Community College search for sections, you will find it. And you can just play around. So here's the intro site, which is basically the same as an AP site. So if you've already got that, stay away. Okay? Child growth and development. That doesn't sound like a class in that pathway at all now, does it? Sounds like a great one for those of you who are in that. Um, psychology of being an adolescent. Ooh. Might learn something about yourself there. All right? So again, that's what you can do is it, it allows you to, and if you're looking for humanities courses, that's another great one. I'm going to go back. Because for a lot of you, that's what you're going to take. So let me go back to that. Let's do, let's do fall. And we'll do humanities. Boom. By the way, you can also search it by when it's offered, where it's offered. And I want to show you one thing here. This is important. Most of you are going to want center campus on Hall Road. We do have a south campus on 12 Mile Road. That's a little, it's a little far for people to come from Romeo, but we, we see it all the time. But it's just something you need to be aware of. So if you see a C in the title, Humanities 1210 C1603, that's at center campus. O is online, R is remote, which means you have to watch it live, okay? And we'll get you all this information apparent night too. I didn't want to overwhelm I'm looking for a south one. Is there one at south? There should be. Ooh, I don't see one at south. So if that's the case, then maybe you want to do something else. Look at this, Intro to Mythology. This also meets the Michigan um, Transfer Agreement. It's one of the classes listed on there. Come on, classes at South, where are you? There we go. So for most of you, you want to avoid that one, right? Because I don't think most of you want to go down to 12 mile. One more little tip, this is off the record. There's a little site, you've probably heard of its K-12 equivalent, ratemyprofessors.com. It's there for a reason. And I, I think there's some value in looking the hardest, I always say the hardest time when you're in college, Remember how I said I'm not an evening person? What if the evening class is taught by the really strong professor that's like a 4.9 out of 5, and the 2 p.m. class is taught by someone who's 1.6 out of 5? I leave that choice up to you. If there's any other questions, we can take them. Can you go with questions? Yeah, go ahead. I'll answer everything I can until the bell rings or whatever it is you guys have to go. And I'll just um, leave up. What like, parts of sign that we have to do if we're already enrolled? Say that again. What parts of signing up for dual enrollment would we have to do for already? He's already dual enrolled. You're already dual enrolled and you're good to go. You just, all you need is every semester you need a new sponsorship form if you're being sponsored. That brings up another point. When you guys take dual enrollment, state law says they must reduce your schedule. Remember my Chippewa kid that got out at 1130? It's because he was taking two courses. I did mine in the morning. But it depends on the district and what your, you know, and what your goals are and things like that. That's what my classes were offered. So you cannot say, I want to dual enroll and I want to be sponsored, but I like all six of the classes or whatever I have. So if I want to take a language class that's not offered here, how would I do that there? That would not be one of the classes offered at Romeo. Although I think Romeo will make sure you probably complete a language first. So if she wants, if she, what class is it by the way? Japanese. That's actually a pretty popular one for dual enrollment. Um, I would you talk with your counselors about it, but there's nothing. The the, dip, the most difficult thing would be you'd probably place it into what we call elementary Japanese one, which is where they teach you the very basics. I will say this: language <coughs> classes in college are harder than they are in high school. I think any language teacher would tell you that. So you would go through our, the whole process we described. You yeah. and a parent would want to attend on the 14th and go through all the steps to, to get registered, but you could take a Japanese. I know, I want to take Italian because my wife is a Sicilian, and I want to learn what she's talking about with my mother-in-law. But I want to do it secretly, so she doesn't know. Uh, do classes at the home transfer to out-of-state schools? Okay. The, the more plain Jane course you take in short of study, intro, you know, English composition, 
almost always the answer is going to be yes. But my advice to you is, what school do you want to go to? Uh, University of Tennessee. Okay. I would go to their website and see if they have anything available to you there. Let me tell you one thing I did. So remember how I only had 19 credits when I started um, at Alma? I took one summer course at the same community college. Before I took that summer course, okay, I went to the dean and I said, will you accept this course from St. Clair? And he said, yes. I said, will you put it in writing? And he did. I came back to campus after I took that summer class. And he's gone. There's a new dean. And I, and I went and I said, I took this course over the summer. I'd like it to count. He says, I'm not accepting this. And I said, really? Whipped out a piece of paper. Your predecessor did. He had to take it. So if you come back as a guest student while you're in a four year, that's something you can do. As far as other schools, I always contact first. I know we got another question over there. I want to get as many as I can. What's the difference between dual enrollment and early college income? Say that again. What is the difference between early college Good question. And early college so I call early college dual enrollment on steroids. You start as an 11th grader. You spend half the day there during 11th grade and 12th grade. 13th grade, you are a full-time college student. There are no tuition or fees. And you're, the goal is to get an associate's degree by the time you're 19 years old. Now, one of the things I always say, let's say you want to do that. We have some great Romeo kids who are doing it right now. Um, could you take dual enrollment as a test drive of what early college would be? Absolutely. And guess what? When it's time to get into early college, if you decide that's what you want to do, you not only have more credits, but you've been at Macomb before. You know what this is all about, and you will have a leg up on every other early college kid. I'm still waiting. If any, does anyone here love business? I'm still waiting for some young student to do that, to do that Walsh thing. Wouldn't that be amazing to rack up 90 credits while you're in high school through dual enrollment and early college, go to Walsh and get your bachelor's degree at 20, before you can even drink. Totally possible. Totally possible. All right, we have another one right here. Um, yes. What if you like get bad grades in school, but like good grades in college? Which do you think is going to matter more when it's time to transfer to a school? Kids always ask me all the time, which looks better on a transcript? Should I do AP or dual enrollment? You know what my answer is? Yes. Anything that you can demonstrate that shows you're capable of college-level work is never going to hurt you. Now, I will say this. If you're trying to transfer to Harvard, Harvard only takes fives on the AP and doesn't take dual enrollment. Okay? I, I can't help there. All right, we have another one? Yes. Is one course one semester or four years? It's one semester. So, and remember, you're going to take probably a three or four credit course and think about those credits the way they work. So just think about this. If you're young enough and you have all 10 classes available to you still, sorry seniors, next year seniors. But if you have 10 classes available, even if you take all three credit classes, that's 30 credits. And if you get the right ones, that's the Michigan transfer grade. Done. Do your dual enrollment classes count towards your high school GPA? OK, here's the catch. Every school is different, and they're allowed to make rules. However, state law says, if you're taking an elective, okay, let me make it as simple as possible. Let's say you're a senior, you're taking one dual enrollment class just to do it. If you do not need that class for graduation, you have your credits elsewhere, and it's not in a core subject area, and you're just taking a dual enrollment class, if you notify your counselor before the class starts that you do not want it counted for high school GPA, state law says that, that is acceptable. And you do have to let us know at the time of application. Yeah. Okay. So you can't yes. wait to see how the class goes no. and then decide. Right. You would notify us on the yes. application when you apply. Yes. <laughs> Very good policy there. So, like, if you have like, a computer at home, are you not allowed to do like a long remote? You have to go to like, a at-home computer. If you don't have an at-home computer, like, but you have a device that you've gotten from Romeo, right? Yeah. That would be fine. The only catch, and I want you guys, I've noticed this a couple of times with Utica, I haven't seen it at Romeo. There are some classes where the professors have employed some anti-cheating software. You're taking a test online or whatever, and it's watching your eyes. And if you like, 
go like that, it could trigger the software. A couple of schools have, you know, they have protection on your Chromebooks so you guys don't look up bad stuff. Sometimes those software, those two pieces of software don't play nice together and the student wasn't able to take the test because it kept stopping them. Um, contact my office as soon as possible. My goal for next year is to have a stash of laptops that we can run out to people if that happens. It's very rare. I haven't seen it from Romeo. I've only seen it from like two school districts. But it has to do with the fact they're trying to keep you safe. All right, here's another question. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm in the dual room at Northwood. And if I were to take like a dual room class at Macomb next year, could I transfer like my Northwood and my Macomb to like a four year school? Yes, but you can year? only dual enroll at one school at a time. Okay. So you cannot do both Northwood and Macomb. You have the right to dual enroll at any school you want. Okay? That is also state law. But if it's outside of Macomb, I know your Northwood classes are probably a whole lot more in money. And you're probably paying, mom and dad are probably paying some out of pocket. At Macomb, that almost won't happen. But good for you. I'm glad you've already started. But if you, you, have to, if you have to basically pick one, and that's all you can do at that time. But you can bounce back and forth. I would say, I would say this. Um, when you say go, you want to join go study in Europe, for example. I don't know enough about European colleges and what their policies are for transferring. I would have to put that to an expert in counseling and academic advice. With many of our schools here, right? And it's cheaper because they, they subsidize it and stuff like that. It's a decision you have to make. Check with them. So I would say, yes, sir. How much for your laptop cost? How much is what? Renting a laptop. From Macomb, it's free. You get to use the laptop during the class, but again, if you know you're going to need one, do it early. Go in July and get that laptop. We will loan it to you for free. Is dual enrollment for Macomb or more beneficial than early college? Which one is better? It's more flexible. Let me tell you this: if you're if, if you know you want to do dual enrollment. Early college gets you up to 60 credits. Dual enrollment, 10 classes, you could get theoretically 40. The question is, that I have to ask you is, will you commit to a 13th year? Do you promise, right? Because, and here's why. I'm worried they might get rid of early college because the way it works is they need you to stay for that 13th year because what they do is they code you a certain way so that your school gets one more year of payment on count day. If kids keep ditching, they might get rid of it. So those of you who aren't familiar, when you attend early college, when he's referencing the 13th year, the year after your class graduates from Romeo, you would have a commitment to attend Macomb that year one after year. graduation. Full one time. more year of Macomb. Okay, so when he says 13th year, that's what that means. I don't think you lose, though, by trying some dual enrollment before you would do it. If you know you want to do early college, dual enroll now. Because you could get a whole two semesters, you could just take one class. It'll get you even further down the road, and it'll open up more options for you. So I, I'm trying to get kids to do that, actually. To realize that you can dual enroll, and then say, yeah, now I want early college. Then you're really maximizing. All right, I think we have one more question. Okay. So I know you mentioned um, uh, language classes, yes. um, and I was wondering if you And those, are, those on, the, on the transfer agreement, they are humanities. So that's kind of cool. That's another area. Your, your Japanese class would help complete the Michigan transfer agreement. So that's kind of cool. Go ahead. I was just wondering if there was any uh, ASL programs. Yes. Yes. And in fact, some schools that don't have ASL are sending kids to Macomb to dual enroll in ASL. But again, it's a language, right? And we do offer it online, but I'm going to tell you, if you're going to do it, commit to try to do it face-to-face. -face. All right. I think we're out of time now. Yeah.